Hello and welcome to Moto Chatter. Let's dive into some racing news from the Moto GP round in Qatar. Paul Aspargo had easily his best start to the Moto GP Championship at the opening round, comfortably outpacing his teammates and leading all but five laps of the race. In the end, being caught and passed by winner Inea Bastianini and then Brad Binder after losing time running off track. Paul was slightly frustrated as he lost a lot of grip in the latter stages of the race, saying, I think today was not a good day for me because I was fighting without the correct weapons at the end of the race. My tyres were completely finished. I was not able to fight with anybody. But despite these issues, he was able to improve on his 6th place starting position and still clinch a podium, finishing just over 1.3 seconds from Bastianini. Honda have made some big changes to the bike for the 2022 season, which is plain to see even to the casual observer. Honda's aim was to make a bike their riders other than Marc Marquez could win on, and they certainly seem to be on the right track. Espargaro is so happy with the changes, he already has an eye on the 2022 title, with his confidence brimming, and he said, Well, I'm glad that it's finally not just Mark fighting for the podium with Honda. I feel that I can do that in all the races. So we started from Qatar and the feeling was nice. We take 16 points here and we move to Mandalika, which is a place where I'm fast. Finally, we can achieve what I'm dreaming of every time I wake up, which is to be world champion. For sure, I'm going to fight for it with Honda. Paul's brother Aleix also had his best start to the season with Aprilia, starting 5th and finishing 4th, just 2.242 seconds from the winner, and he was chasing down his podium finishing brother, maybe with a lap or two more, Aleix could have got his second podium for Aprilia, but that second podium is sure to come soon. Aleix Espargaro had this to say, Coming so close to the podium and missing it may seem like a disappointment, but I'm extremely satisfied with our weekend and today's race. The times show that I was one of the fastest on track. Unfortunately, I lost a few tenths battling with Marc and Juan. In any case, Aprilia is in the mix. We are in it. It will be an extraordinary championship where we'll certainly be able to battle with the top riders and the best manufacturers in the world. Alay showed good pace and racecraft and took the fourth place entirely on merit. I have said before that he has to be the most underrated rider in the paddock and rarely gets the recognition for what he does. Apart from developing the Aprilia to get it to the stage that it is at now and battling at the front, he is consistently outpacing his multiple race winning teammates by a substantial margin. And his teammate Maverick Vinales was understandably not happy with his performance in Qatar saying, This is obviously a disappointing result. This is certainly not in line with my expectations or the team's. But I never had the right feeling with the front end and going into corners. I didn't make any mistakes in the race and I didn't have any significant drop in tyre performance, but I didn't manage to have a good pace either. Starting 19th, Maverick's 16th place finish was helped significantly by Miller's retirement, Alex Marquez and Oliveira's DNFs and Bagnaya taking himself and Jorge Martin out of contention. But at the chequered flag, Vinales was 23.216 seconds off the leader and almost a second a lap slower than his teammate over the race distance. Vinales is still adjusting his riding style from the inline force he was used to at Yamaha and Suzuki where he had plenty of success to the V4 of the Aprilia. He is already six races into his Aprilia career but is hampered by the short testing season and the short practice time available at each round. He said, I lose the front all the time and I can't push, especially with new tyres. With used tyres it becomes much better, but with new tyres I have a lot of problems. We need to try and in a race weekend you can't try every run, you only have 40 minutes, so at the end of the day we cannot change too much. Vinales is undoubtedly a talented rider and will be doing all he can to get up to speed, but it is all down to him. As from the results that Aleish is putting in, no blame can be put on the bike. Another rider getting off to a disappointing start was Francesco Bagnaia, starting down in 9th position and eventually losing the front and taking out his Ducati compatriot and pole sitter Jorge Martin on lap 12 while fighting for 8th position. These things can happen in racing and fortunately both riders walked away, but the problems Bagnaia is having are more than just a simple front end crash. I was a bit late on entry with Jorge, but it was not really a hard braking, so it is quite strange to have the front locking, but it's like this, he said after the race. Ducati have worked a lot over the winter to develop the GP22 machine, but with Bastianini taking a compelling win on the GP21, which was so successful in Bagnaia's hands in the second half of last season, 
and with Jack Miller having to retire from the race on his GP22, there are serious question marks over the GP22's race readiness. And Bagnaia commented, Inea from his first day of testing just started to put fuel on the bike and was riding, and we were too much concentrated on developing. I was 16th at turn 3, so it was not the best start for sure. Then I started to push to recover positions, but we were not ready at all to fight for the win today. Bagnaia will focus on bike setup and adjusting his riding style to the bike, rather than further developing the package, saying, the main thing will be to start from this and don't touch anything on the bike anymore, because I really need to be more concentrated on me and thinking more on my riding style and to have again the same feeling of last year and the same results of last year. Do you think Bagnaia can regain the form he had last year on the new bike and do the issues with the GP22 put his championship challenge in jeopardy? Can Vinales catch up to his teammate and when do you think the next podium will come for Alessia Spargo and Aprilia? Is Paula Spargo now a favourite for the title or like me do you think that Marc Marquez will find his feet on the new Honda and take the title back in 2022? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the stories coming out of the 2022 Qatar round of MotoGP. If you did, you can click the link coming up in the top left of your screen for more from the Qatar round. Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and remember to subscribe for plenty more motorcycle videos to come. But whatever you do, have a great day, and thanks for watching.